Welcome into the high school red zone here on the CW62 week number one. Glad you moved on over from channel seven with us or if you're just joining us, welcome aboard. Quite a night around the area, just about everyone in action. A couple of teams, Spartanburg and Gaffney play their opening games tomorrow and then whoever didn't open tonight will have their first games next Friday. Let us start out with a colossal battle between two squads that aren't that far from each other but hadn't played since back in the Johnson or actually the Nixon administration and that would be Greenville and Dorman. It was a debut for a new head coach on one side and a Greenville team on the other side that made its deepest playoff run a year ago and Todd Summers with the recap. Dustin Curtis making his head coaching debut at Dorman as the Cavaliers play host to the Red Raiders midway through the first quarter. After a close fourth down conversion, DJ Porter takes the snap, runs to his right, and finds tight end Kaysan Gilliam wide open for the 15-yard touchdown. Dorman leads 7-0. Just over four minutes to play in the first quarter. The Red Raiders answer Jordan Sink rolls to his left. Throws to the back of the end zone, and Luke Crawl does the toe tap inbounds for a seven-yard touchdown. Game tied at seven. Late first quarter, Cavs facing third and 28. Hudson Talley rolls out, throws deep, and somehow finds DJ Porter behind the Red Raiders defense for a 74-yard touchdown. Dorman leads 13-7. Early second quarter, Javion Sherman takes the direct snap, powers in for the one-yard TD. Greenville up by one. First play from scrimmage after the Red Raiders score. Demarius Foster takes the handoff, runs left, cuts it back to his right, and finds plenty of daylight as he races 73 yards for the score. Dorman back on top, 20-14. Midway through the second, Hudson Talley gets the ball out quickly to Trayvon Fernandez. He makes a shoestring catch and stays on his feet for a 16-yard touchdown. Cavaliers up 26-14. Under two minutes to play in the second quarter, Javion Sherman takes the direct snap once again straight ahead. Three-yard TD, Red Raiders cut the Cavaliers' lead to 26-21. Less than two minutes into the second half, Greenville is forced to punt. Dorman's Shane Nash gets free for the block, and Jonathan Frazier recovers in the end zone for the touchdown. Cavaliers up 36-21. First play of the fourth quarter, Demarius Foster finds a hole, comes through the other side, and takes it 35 yards for the touchdown. Dorman up 43-21. Just over a minute to play. Demarius Foster delivers the exclamation point as he takes the handoff, goes 56 yards for his third touchdown of the night. He finishes with 307 yards rushing on the evening to help Dorman roll past Greenville. Final score, 53-28. I think Demarius Foster is pretty freaking good. That's what I think. Uh, I think the kids played their hearts out. Uh, we, we really laid it out at halftime, but uh, we did a lot of bad things, didn't tackle well, but we hit some big plays. For the High School Red Zone, I'm Todd Summers. All right, thanks, Todd. Just down the road at Burns. Well, a team that was 500 a year ago, the Rebels, looking for bigger things in 22. And big stuff right here, Jamarius Bomar. Off the screen pass, 72 yards to touchdown. Burns had a 21-7 lead on Brooklyn Casey from down in Lexington. Later on, little dump off Colby Shaw, Amani Weaver, 24 yards. Show you the final, Burns rolls on. First time those teams got together since 1987. Other action, Lawrence and Hillcrest, a Rams team that won their region a year ago, won eight games, had a bunch of close losses in the few games they dropped, and they return a lot of talent, including Bennett Judy, their quarterback, and guys around him like Jalen Neal. That went for a first down. Judy on the fade to Logan Cauldron, 12 yards for the score. Rams up 21 to seven. Judy again. Remember last year, he passed for over 3,000 yards, set all kinds of school records, and leads Hillcrest to an opening win over Lawrence. Rams have won seven of eight in the series. This one, 41 to seven. T.L. Hanna lost all kinds of seniors over 40. Matt Reel, the new head coach at Boiling Springs, bringing his team into Anderson and trying to make some noise. But, well, they've got a system there, do the jackets, and guys like Josh Donald able to deliver the early touchdown as Hanna put down the marker and seemingly never looked back. 13th meeting all time in the series. Ball clubs have split the first 12. Hard hitting D right there, delivered by Wills Epson. When it's done, Hannah cruising on and pitching a shutout, going on to the decisive win against Boiling Springs. Meanwhile, a matchup tonight in which you've got a Clinton team that a year ago had, well, as good of a season as they've had in over a decade, facing the former Lawrence head coach Greg Lawson and his debut for Batesburg Leesville. Brody Lehart taking it into the end zone for the Clinton touchdown. 
a ball club that had its first winning season last year since 2010, got together with VL from the Midlands for the first time since 81, and Clinton was on its way to an opening win. What a job Corey Fountain is doing, and they put up nearly 70 on their visitors. Other action, Powdersville, which got off to a 12-0 start a year ago before falling in the 3A upper state playoffs, taking on Broom. Many players from that good team are back, like quarterback Eli Hudgens on the long connection. And that's going to go for a score later on. Hudgens, low snap, looking and dumping, and able to find his receiver, Drake Sloan, for another TD. Patriots were on their way to the victory by a final count of 47 to 23. Woodruff and Chapman get together. Spartanburg County rivals at the home of the Panthers. Chapman team that's won 62 of its past 68, but was 8 and 3 a year ago, trying for a seven straight win in the series. Matthias Scott hung up right there by the Wolves. Carson Tucker later on for Woodruff to DJ Nash. That drive would later stall. Woodruff, though, wins in overtime. They snap the skid against Chapman with a 13 7 victory in OT. Union County went down the line, took on Newberry. And a little fumble action right there. C.J. Brandon able to come away with the recovery. It set up a Cam Owens touchdown. And the Jackets, they won just one time of their eight games a year ago. But Brian Thompson's team gets out of the gate with the victory by a final of 30-14. to 14. When we come back, quite a tussle over Clemson Way. Will Young back at his alma mater on the opposing sideline. Could Greer upset the two-time reigning 3A champ Daniel? That action and so much more is coming up.